Well, our world has always been in a race between technology and education. Usually these two go hand in hand. But there are some points in history where technology races so far ahead that education can barely keep the pace. Let me give you a quick historic example. In the 15th century, technology raced ahead as a great piece of technology was invented. The printing press, allowing to print books much cheaper than ever before. Well, unfortunately, only a small fraction of the entire population knew how to read, ultimately leading to massive social conflicts and inequality. Until at some point in time, the whole educational system was revolutionized in order to keep up as the first universities and schools were born. Well, this happened a couple of times in history. Whenever technology raced ahead, it first leads to social pain and inequality, until at some point in time, the whole educational system gets turned upside down in order to keep up. Now, let's jump back to 2019. Do we have a similar race between technology and education today? I think, yes, we do. We've invented a new and a powerful technology called digitalization. Every day we can now see how smartphones, how the internet, how artificial intelligence changes our jobs as well as it changes our, our private lives. A recent study by McKinsey predicts that in the next 10 years, up to one third of all work activities could be completely replaced because of automation. Today, the algorithms built by just a few techies in Silicon Valley decide how we communicate with each other. They decide how we buy things. They can even be used to manipulate entire elections, as we've seen, as we've seen in the US. <coughs> but the vast majority of us here today has no idea of how this technology actually works, right? What I'm wondering is, how should we, as citizens, be able to make wise political decisions? Political decisions. We do not understand what's possible and what's not. So, like in the historic examples that we've just seen, there's now an increasing gap between those, those who design the change and those who are left behind because they lack the skills or the means to adapt. Once again, technology races ahead and education falls behind. I personally worked as a data scientist. I studied information systems and artificial intelligence at the universities here in Münster and at Harvard. I then went on to lead a team of 15 engineers in an analytics startup. Every day I stood up and did my very best to help technology race ahead, until at some point in time I realized that actually the much bigger challenge and the much bigger opportunity for our society resides at the other part of that race, helping digital education, helping supporting people to catch up. So this year I quit my job to work full-time on digital education. I think, let's, let's take a look at the second part of our race here, education. Well, there we see that our educational institutions are now facing conditions that have dramatically changed in recent years, right? We move from an old world with a situation where great learning content is rare to a new world where much of the knowledge is a commodity and often free to use, either as a YouTube material, a blog post, or some other type of material. We also move from an old world with very stable career paths to a new world where, well, much of the knowledge that we learn in higher education is not relevant 10 years later anymore. I'm 26 now. My own generation will probably retire in 2060, but I can't even predict what skills will be relevant for myself, well, five years from now. Well, and how did our educational institutions change in the face of these dramatic shifts? Not a lot, right? We still live in a world where we put hundreds of people in the same huge lecture halls designed for one-size-fits-all teaching philosophy, right? And even more, we see this, this old world and lifelong learning. We still have many companies where employees just spend maybe, maybe two or maybe three days a year with training, right? This would be like if I would go to the doctor and ask him, what should I do to stay fit and healthy for the rest of my life? And he says, well, David, I advise you just run a marathon very early in your life and you'll be fine, fit and healthy for the rest of your life. Doesn't sound like a great advice, does it? So I'm afraid we are about to lose that race between 
technology and education, as the way we teach has not evolved with the dramatic shift that is required these days. And I don't think we can tolerate that, and I think we need a new generation that takes this issue into their own hands. Well, so two years ago, my friend Marius and I decided to start on the green field, to build an education and to experience from the, from the ground up. We developed this idea of what we call a learning accelerator. A learning accelerator is based, based on, a, on a very simple but radical idea, using state-of-the-art technology to put all available efforts into the individual learner and the learning environment. To bring this idea to life, we founded a non-profit organization right here in Münster, actually just a few meters away from the stage. We called it uh, Tech Labs. Tech Labs teaches coding skills in the fields of web development, data science, artificial intelligence. It's a 16-week program, completely for free, open for everyone, and designed so that you can complete it parallel to your studies or to your regular job, for example. Tech Labs is built on three fundamental principles that define our idea of a learning accelerator and our idea of digital education in the 21st century. The first one is the effective combination of online and offline learning. Every student at Tech Labs gets access to our own online learning platform with videos, assignments, articles. Most of this content is not produced by us, but sourced and curated from the great and often free resources of the web. So if you're a morning person, you can do your e-learning lessons in the morning. If you're a night owl, you do it at night. If you struggle with a certain concept, you can always go back and revisit the lecture because the computer doesn't get tired to explain it to you three or four times in a row. On the other side, we use the offline meetings for interaction with our students, for inviting speakers, for hackathons, and for social events. Well, the second principle is called personalization. Let me ask you here in the audience, who of you uses Amazon and orders at Amazon? <laughs> That's impressive, right? And I think, I think a large part, a significant part of this success is based on the fact that Amazon learns our behavior over time, right? That it learns what product we might like or buy next. But what I'm wondering is, why does our society spend billions on improving and researching these personalization algorithms at services like, like Amazon or Spotify, but close to nothing for providing these personalized digital learning opportunities in education? Isn't it, isn't it strange? We've completely failed to use these personalization technologies, to use them in education. We still live in a world where some of us think it's actually called personalization if the instructor learns the student's name. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a great start, but when it comes to education, people are radically different, aren't they? Everybody needs a specific pace, a specific path, and a specific learning goal and destination. So at Tech Labs, every student gets a unique, personalized learning path based on prior knowledge. And even with the basic version on our platform that we use right now, the results are absolutely stunning. And I can just imagine the wonderful things that would happen if universities and, and schools would deploy this at a larger scale. Now, the third principle is called community. Learning tech skills isn't easy. And if you struggle with a certain concept, and this always happens at some point in time when learning coding, it's often not the instructor, but the fellow learners and the peers that help you to stay motivated and to keep on track. I think we radically underestimate today the value of these actually learning communities in our educational institutions today. So by killing this traditional one-size-fits-all lecture and letting people have a flexible e-learning lecture at home, we actually free up the valuable offline time for deep interaction with our students. So we use technology to make the classroom more social. I think this is one of the kind of very paradox things these days, right? That actually using tech transforms a very unsocial experience. People listening in a lecture hall, just being quiet, listening into a social environment that embraces curiosity, diversity, and the value in learning new things. So, how does all of this look like in practice? In your first week, 
usually, usually start with just meeting your fellow learners and your learning community. Then a few days later, you might actually start with your own e-learning track that has been uh, personalized and, and generated just for you. And if you are a beginner, for example, this might actually be one of your first lessons, teaching you how to write a small program to let a cat say hello world. But soon you will be able to team up with other learners in the community to work on your own small first coding project. And this will be usually a slightly more useful thing than the cat we've just seen. For example, one of our teams just, just used their new coding skills to predict bike traffic flows in Münster to optimize the entire infrastructure. The whole thing at TechLabs is run by a team of volunteers who often spend more than 10 hours a week with improving and designing our program. We teamed up with experienced mentors who guide our students, with psychologists who help us with personalization, and we even teamed up with professors who now use the TechLabs program to free up their valuable offline time for deeper interaction with the students and to work on exciting projects. And this all kind of worked. After just one and a half years, we have created 300 more techies. We have opened two more locations in Copenhagen and Barcelona, aiming to create 10 more in Germany next year, aiming ultimately to create 1,000 techies by 2020. And 90% of all TechLabs participants had no coding experience at all before joining our 16-week program. This, for example, is, is Jin. Jin started... <laughs> yeah, friend of Jin. Uh, <laughs> Jin. Jin started the TechLabs program last semester. A few months later, with no coding experience at all, by the way, a few months later, she participated in Germany's largest hackathon, finishing third. And this on the left is Humera, also from Münster here. After completing the TechLabs program, she went on to Harvard Medical School to apply her coding skills there for research. A couple of weeks ago, she wrote me a message saying how thankful she was that TechLabs has provided her the coding experiences that she used then for medical research at Harvard. Well, for me, though, the biggest reward is actually seeing these people being surprised by their own learning progress. I think. For many of us here, this happened last as a child, maybe when we learned how to ride a bike or so. But I think we, we found a way to recreate that feeling many times. It's worth to fight for it. And I think this is just the beginning. While we start with learning accelerators for, for coding skills right now, I think this new model of, of education is equally well suited to, to teach all sorts of other skills. It's suited for teaching kids, it's suited for lifelong learning, and it's suited to educate the workforce of entire companies with a focus on personalization while leveraging the free and powerful resources of the web. So what can we do today to make this come true? I think what's important to understand is that we are all part of this education system. As teachers, of course, but also as parents, as students, as colleagues at work, we are all responsible to help education to catch up with technology. And there's so many ways for you to make a change. If you are a parent or a student, hold your institutions, your teachers at school, your managers at work, hold them accountable for providing these effective and personalized learning opportunities. It's there, it's possible. And if you are working in education, ask yourself, how can personalization, blended learning, community, how can it transform my own classroom into a learning accelerator? I promise it's actually not that hard. In the end, this new type of education isn't just about teaching just a few more technical skills. It's about teaching people to take charge of their lives and to participate in meeting one of the greatest challenges facing humanity today, the wise management of the power that we have gained through digital technology. Thank you very much.